Open your Bible to Revelation chapter 21, verse 3 through 5. Revelation 21, verse 3 through 5. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Everybody, I'm Erica, and welcome to my Steam Lab! I've got something extra special to show you today, and I have faith that it will be my coolest discovery yet! Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And what I can see is this awesome telescope! Ooh! Everything! Wow. I am super excited for what we'll be able to see through this telescope. Stars, planets, galaxies, satellites, space exploring cats. Well, maybe not the cats. There's a skylight in the lab. So I can see all the cool stuff from right here. I just have to finish focusing the telescope. Okay, while I focus on the telescope, why don't you guys focus on the awesome Bible story today? <laughs> it's out of this world. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 3 to 5. John squinted against the blinding glare of the afternoon sun. Just a short distance away, frothy waves crashed against craggy rocks and foamed over white sands. This island of Patmos was isolated and rocky, but the view was stunning, surrounded by brilliant blue sea and sky. Most beautiful prison on earth. Though he wasn't chained up, John was in jail. The Roman emperor who was unable to make John stop preaching about Jesus had exiled him to this prison colony where many prisoners worked in the mines. There was no way off the island. So John was now very old, living out his final years on the island of Patmos with a handful of criminals. 
I can share the story of Jesus with them too. John settled into a shallow cave on shore to take shelter from the heat. He closed his eyes. I've seen so much. John had lived longer than any of the other of Jesus' disciples. He had watched the early church grow while the story of Jesus spread fast and bright as wildfire. But he had also seen terrible things happen to those who believed in Jesus. In fact, many people died just for talking about Jesus. We saw everything Jesus did. We can believe he'll be with us forever, even through death. Despite the threats and persecution, more people than ever were following Jesus. God's story was traveling from one end of the world to the other, just like Jesus said it would. I wonder why I've been allowed to live this long. In the cool of the shallow cave, John began to relax. His head was nodding. Until a voice like a trumpet sounded behind him. Write on a scroll what you see. John blinked. Was he awake or dreaming? Wait, what? Uh, I don't see. Oh. Turning, John saw Jesus himself, his eyes blazing with intensity. Do not be afraid. I was dead. But look, I am alive forever and ever. Write about what is happening now and what will happen later. John's mind worked quickly, trying to grasp what was happening. It appeared that God was trying to show him a picture of things that would happen in the future, and he wanted John to write them down and show them to others so that they could believe too. Yes, Lord. Do you mind if I grab a scroll? Oh, and a quill. I don't want to forget anything. John watched, amazed, as God showed him many things that were coming. Some were wonderful, some were terrible, some were mysterious. After the vision ended, John began a letter to several of the new churches. I, John, am writing this. I am a friend who suffers like you. As members of Jesus' royal family, we can put up with anything that happens to us. John explained every strange and amazing thing he had seen. Some of it made him tremble. Others wouldn't make sense until the right time had come. But the last part of his vision. That's the very best part. I can't wait to write all about it. God had shown John how the whole story will turn out for everyone who believes in Jesus. Carefully, he recalled all the incredible things he'd seen. How am I going to do this? I mean, there's no way that words can capture it. But I have to try. It's just a picture until they get to see for themselves how real and breathtaking it will be. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. John remembered the words that Jesus had spoken while he was on earth, right before his death and return to life. There are many rooms in my father's house. I am going there to prepare a place for you. If I go and do that, I will come back, and I will take you to be with me. Then you will also be where I am. That's what I saw. It's the special place Jesus is making for each one of us. A place where we will never be apart from God. John recalled the next scene from his vision. He saw a great white throne. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, now God makes his home with people. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. John paused as he stared in wonder at what he had just written down. All of these terrible things we've seen, people sick and hurt, being mocked and put in jail, all of it will be made right. Something else stood out to John. Light. There was so much light. The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it. God's glory is its light. And the Lamb, Jesus, is its lamp. Its gates will never be shut because there will be no night there. The place John had seen wasn't just filled with light. It was beautiful too. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. 
It was as clear as crystal. It flowed from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Its fruit was ripe every month. The leaves of the tree bring healing to the nations. Once again, John lifted his pen from the page. It just seemed impossible to share the real glory of what he had seen with tiny black marks on a scroll. He tried again. God's servants will serve him. They will see his face. John felt himself grinning. He could say one thing for sure, no one would be bored. He and every other person who believes in God would finally be able to live out what they were created to do fully and completely with no sin or frustration or weariness to get in the way. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Now, John didn't know exactly when the things God had shown him would take place, and neither do we. But from what we've seen and heard, we know one thing for certain. In the end, God will make everything right for those who trust in him. Would you look at that? That doesn't look like cheese at all! <laughs> I love getting a glimpse of things I'm not used to seeing every day. Like today's story. We got a little glimpse of what the future could be like. When Jesus was on earth, he said if anyone puts their faith in him, they'll have a relationship with God that will last forever. That means we can be a part of God's big story. A story that never ends. Now. I don't know what you imagine when you think about heaven. Maybe it's clouds and harps and angels flying around. Maybe what you imagine is exactly right. Though there's a lot about the future we don't understand, it's exciting to think about the things we do know. When we believe in Jesus, we can look forward to a time when there will be no more pain, no more sadness, everything will be made new. We will be fully alive with God in a way we can't even imagine. That's the one thing to remember today. Following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. Having a glimpse at the future can give us hope here in the present. When we're worried about something or someone, or when we're sad or in pain, we know the bad things won't last forever. God has a future plan for us that we can truly focus on. Speaking of, let's see what this thing is focused on now. <gasps> I don't believe it! Space cats! Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Thanks for hanging with me in the lab and keep focusing on the important stuff. See you later.
There. Okay. Did we miss it? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold All on. Right. I'll, I'll extend the time here a little bit. Thank you. All right. Ready, set, right. go. Say cheese. I'm already smiling. Cheese. Okay, fine. Cheese. How long did you set the time? Uh, oh, sorry. All right, one more time, one more time. Come on, we, we're, we're gonna get this. Okay. I'm setting it for seven and a half seconds. Okay, Here we go. last time. Boom. Let's do it. Here we go. This is the keeper. Yep. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I did not mean to hit you. I know, I know, you're going fast. Can we just keep doing this? Yeah, we, fine, oh, yeah, yeah. Let me see if it do took. it. I don't think it took. Well, no, I think it might have taken. Oh, I think we're good. Yeah. We could just one more? No, I'm done. On, Thank you, goodbye. Come on. I don't want. Come on. All right. Okay. Fine, go. Come on. Okay, great. I couldn't hold on to the grip. I, I'll do it one more time, all right? But this is ridiculous. There's so many pictures of us. We don't need any more pictures. You the world me? needs more pictures of us, Brandon. I don't think it does. Yes, it does. Fine. You know what? Take your picture. Just take yourself. All right, yourself. fine. I can't take it like that when you're facing the du wrong direction. You're supposed to be facing that way. Look. Oh, fine. Be that way. Um. Everybody, I'm John. And I'm Brandon, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. Oh, we love to tell you jokes that make you laugh. Well, For I mean, we example. do more than tell you jokes. No, no, no. What do you call a frozen dog? I don't know. A popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but John, seriously. What do don't... you call an alligator in a vest? A crocodile. No, what? No, an investigator? Oh, <laughs> no, I get it. That's funny. That's a really yeah, good one. Yeah. Thank you. No, but this show isn't all about telling people jokes. Well, I know what? that. I know that. I know that. I just wanted to I just wanted to practice a little for my stand-up comedy act on Tuesday. What? Where is it? Well, at the one and only Cafe for Comedy Coffee and Curly Fries, stand up every Tuesday mid-morning. Oh. Haven't you ever heard of the Curly Fried Comedy and Coffee to go? Uh-uh. Laps and lattes. Mm -hmm. mm, muffins over monologues? Have you, have you seriously never heard of any of these events? Uh, no, but it sounds pretty cool. P pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool? Practice. <laughs> this is the event of the week for upcoming comedians. It's like the place to be. It's not just pretty cool. It's basically the most epically cool thing that's ever happened to a Tuesday since tacos. Oh, well, awesome. Good for you. Well, thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm sorry I'm so uptight. It's just that I'm, I'm wondering if even though it's a super awesome opportunity, if it would be even more awesome if I didn't do it. What? It's just, I, I, I don't know how it's gonna go. What if they don't like me? What if they don't laugh? Brandon, oh, no ha ha. Yeah, okay, well you never know how something's gonna turn out before you do it, you know? Well, when I eat a grilled cheese sandwich, Brandon, I know it's gonna feel like a thousand tiny dairy miracles melting in my mouth all at once mm, every time. Okay. I know that for sure. Yeah. But with stand-up comedy, I don't know. Oh well, yeah, well that's, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? The worst? Mm hmm Where's your dream? That's right, this way. So paper bags, am I right? And everyone thought these puppies would never be in style. Oh, muffin, anyone? They're gluten full. <laughs> Who am I kidding? No one's even here. Oh, that's the worst you can imagine? That doesn't seem that bad. Whatever. All right, now answer this question. Think about it. What's the best that could happen? The best? Best is over here. Hey, everyone, I'm Jonathan. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, who here hates traffic? Yeah? I know. I know. It's like, move your cars faster on the road. I got places to be. Oh, hey, but what about paying taxes? 
Ooh, right? <laughs> right? Could those forms be any more complicated? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, if one more ad interrupts my streaming video, I'm going to be like, <laughs> oh, stop it. Hey, stop it. Thank you. My time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Especially you. <laughs> Thank you. I think that seems pretty doable. Maybe. No, I mean, maybe even if they don't throw flowers and even if you don't wear a suit, which I must admit is the least likely thing of your scenario, mm. it could still be good. Good. Good is like an insult to an artist. It, it, it either has to be great or it's worthless. Okay, yeah, but you're never gonna be great if you don't start somewhere. So you're saying I should do it? Look, I'm saying you never know how it's gonna turn out. So don't let your fear of the unknown be what stops you. Okay. 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 You're right. I'm gonna do it. All right. You've inspired me. Ah, that's awesome. Uh, can I practice my jokes on you right now? Ah, uh, that's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh. Well, hello. To my favorite co host. Hey. What you got for us today, Kellen? Today, we're going all the way to the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. After all the history in the Old Testament, and after Jesus came and rescued people and made a way for us to have a relationship with God again, you can read Revelation to find the answer to this next question. What happens next? Oh, I can't wait to find out. Well, you'll have to wait, because first, we're going to dive into some viewer mail. Wait, is viewer mail a thing? Is actual mail still a thing? Of course. I asked our viewers to describe the best place they could imagine, and these are their responses. Do you guys mind helping me read a few? Sure. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good throw. Yeah. Who wants to go first? Oh, me. Uh, this letter is from Ariel in Broken Bow, Nebraska. Nice. There you go. Uh, dear Kellen, I hope you're doing well. Thank you, Ariel. Yeah. The best place I can imagine would have lots of flowers because I love flowers. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I can almost picture it. Uh, when I was a little girl, there was this beautiful field of wildflowers down the street from our house. There were flowers of every color, blues and purples and yellows of every shade. Sometimes I would just lie down in the field and watch the clouds move in the sky for hours until my dad finally had to call me home for dinner. The best place I can imagine would have flowers as far as the eye could see, and they'd grow all year round. That's a place I'd like to see someday. Mm. Wow. Paints a pretty picture, doesn't it? Sure does. Um, let's hear your letter. Oh, you bet. This one is from Javier from Claremore, Oklahoma. Hi, Javier. Let's see. Dear Kellen, I'm glad you asked about my imagination because imagining is what I do best. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest thing I can imagine is an amusement park with the tallest rides in the world. I'm talking about a roller coaster as high as the sky. Can you imagine riding a roller coaster through the clouds and right by the sun? And it wouldn't be scary because the clouds are actually cotton candy. So you could scoop some up to eat every time you rode by. And the best part of Javier's world, that's what it'll be called, is that there are no lines. That would be awesome. That is awesome. I mean, I love roller coasters and that sounds wonderful. <laughs> hey, have you got a letter, Kellen? I sure do. This one is from Keith. He lives in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Ooh, it's kind of a tricky one. Oh. Ah. <clears throat> Dear Kellen, one of my favorite things to do is play video games with my friends. Every Friday night, 
My friends and I go to one of our houses or apartments or whatever, and we order pizza and we play video games. And I'm talking all kinds of video games, racing games, side scrollers, adventure games, open world builders, even classics like Pac-Man and Pong. It's my favorite place to be, surrounded by people I love, games I like to play, and food I like to eat. What could be better than that? Wow. Who knew mail could be so much fun? I'm gonna go have to check my mailbox later. No kidding. It's really cool to see into other people's imaginations. What did that have to do with the book of Revelation? I'm glad you asked. The book of Revelation was written by one of Jesus' disciples named John. It was written long after Jesus died and rose again, when John was an old man. God gave John a vision of the future, so John wrote it all down. No kidding. So what's heaven going to be like? Is it going to be like what we read in these letters? Yeah. Will there be flowers and roller coasters? Uh, and pizza? Oh, please tell me there will be pizza in heaven. Um, I have a confession to make. I don't really have all the answers to your questions. God only gave John a glimpse into the future. He didn't fill in every single detail, but maybe if you close your eyes and listen to what John wrote, you'll be able to picture a little bit of it. In his vision, John saw a new heaven and a new earth, and he heard a voice. The voice said, look, God now makes his home with the people. He will live with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Things are no longer the way they used to be. And John saw God himself sitting on a great white throne. And God said, I am making everything new. Wow. Yeah, that's better than pizza. Huh. Way better. No more sadness, no more pain. Everything that's old will be made new. Can you even imagine? I really can't. Yeah, it's like, it's like it's better than I can even imagine. Exactly. Even though we don't know every single detail about the future or about heaven, we do know that our amazing, creative, powerful, and loving God has a plan that will blow our mind. Oh man, we have got a lot to look forward to. No doubt. Thanks, Kellen. Yes, indeed. Keep in touch, fellas. Hey, I'll send you a letter. <laughs> ah, now where do I keep my stamps? I don't know. Okay. Reveal the question. Ah, oh, what do you think heaven will be like? Ooh. Yeah, do you imagine lots of clouds, harps, streets of gold? Will there be pizza involved? Talk about it together. What do you think heaven will be like? And maybe it'll be like going to my stand-up routine. Do you think there's some comedy in heaven? If you're gonna be there, there will have to be. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Wait, were you being nice or mean just then? We'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. See ya. What's well, black and white and red all over? Sunburn penguin! <laughs> this is my mom waking me up when I'm late for school. All right, here we go. <laughs> Wake up, you're late for school! <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know what my favorite breakfast cereal is? Any cereal! All right, here we go. How about this one? I got a better one for you, are you right? Um, one fish, two fish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the